It's not the win that we were looking for or hoping for, but maybe it should be the win that we expected. The Celtics did beat the Spurs. Eh. Needed a little bit of help from Robert Williams. Need a little help from Malcolm Brogdon. I'm going to talk about it right now on a bonus Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how I started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics, pod, home of the winners. B. Hey, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And I'm here for you every day with a free, fresh podcast dropped directly to your device, generally Monday through Friday. But there's a bonus podcast this week because they play on Saturday, they play on every Saturday this month. So I might as well drop bonus podcasts when they play, especially when they win. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. The show's also on YouTube. You can check it out there. Hop into the comments section. It's a growing community. Lots of fun Celtics fans in there talking about the podcast, talking about the game. I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. Once upon a time, I played basketball professionally long, way too long ago. Today, it's about the Boston Celtics 121-116 win over the San Antonio Spurs. These bonus podcasts condense, so I'm just going to talk kind of stream of consciousness a little bit more. Uh, on these on these bonus podcasts, just to give you a little something extra for the weekend. Uh, the, the the my big takeaway, my big takeaway, my my thirty thousand foot takeaway here, and it's part of the column that I wrote on Boston Sports Journal. And the headline of that was, uh, "It's not the kind of win we wanted from the Celtics, but it should be the kind of win we expect." And I think, thinking back on it, and I. I just did the podcast from the floor of the, the American Airlines Center. If you missed that after the Dallas win, check it out. That's fun. I always love podcasting from the floor. I said this would be the game that this was the test. This was the one that showed us, can this team, where is this team mentally? Uh, easy to get up for the game against Dallas. Not as easy to get up for a game like this. And, hey, the Spurs, not only are they not good, but they didn't have uh, Devin Vassell, they didn't have Jakob Pertl. Uh, they were missing out. They were missing somebody else too. So they they were down three important players, and it's just a team that it's already struggling. So they came out, and actually, I thought the Celtics came out pretty well. They earned, their energy was great. They were running off of uh, makes. They were they built up a big lead. They built up a lead that was up to about fifteen. And even in the fourth quarter, there was an opportunity for them to, they were up 10 and just, it just needed, just needed a, a few stops. And it would have been, it would have been a, a blowout. We were closed out. It would have been closed out as a 20 point win. And, but it wasn't, it, they came down to a, a couple of shots here or there. It felt like the entire second half, the entire, the Spurs were one shot away for most of the second half. They were just one shot away. They just could never get that shot. And you realize, like, the, the Celtics came out with just enough energy. They, they came out with just enough. They didn't come out with the same intensity that they did against Dallas. And that's just that that's just how it is. It's just how it is. You're, you're just not going to get the same level of effort and intensity on a Saturday night against the San Antonio Spurs, the 13 win Spurs missing three of their stars. And you're not going to get that same intensity that you did against Luca on TNT. It's just, it, we shouldn't expect it. We, I'm sorry to say this. One of my biggest things in just in life is setting the expectation. Just like the podcast. I have set the expectation. You're getting a podcast every day. You're getting these bonus podcasts. If I didn't do a podcast tonight, there'd be a, a questions. What happened to these bonus podcasts? Why'd you stop doing them? If I stopped doing daily podcasts and did once a week, people would be like, Where, where's my daily, where's my daily locked on fix? I set the expectation that this is how it's going to be. The Celtics 
have set the expectation. They have. They they have told us, hey, you know what? Against these bad teams, hmm, we're going to give you eh, 70, 70%, 60, some days 50. You're going to lose to a couple of these bad teams. But most of the time, we're going to squeak out a win. Or a lot of times, hey, there have been blowouts of bad teams. Those blowouts were a while ago when the Celtics have played kind of 500 basketball for about four weeks now. So there's this feeling of, hey, we want to get back to that expectation that they set. And and Joe Mazzulla has said, we set this expectation of this historically good offense. And and maybe that's working against us a little bit here in public perception. And I think, I think he's right. They, they have set that expectation. And now that we know they're capable of it, we expect it. We want more of it. That's the thing. If we didn't think this team was better than this, we'd just be like, Hey, great win. Way to, way to grind this out. But we also know that this, this could have been a 30 point game. And, and why, why do we care? Why, why? I mean, first of all, let's be honest. You care because you want to be like, look at my Boston Celtics. Look at how good they look. Oh my God. They're going to win a championship. You want to hop into these YouTube comments and start crowing about here comes banner 18. And if any of these other fans come around, they'd be like, Hey, you want a piece of this? You want a piece of this 30 point win? Just step right up. So number one, we want these wins, admit it, because you want to be able to crow about these wins. That's why you're a sports fan. That's why people love these sports. I, when, especially when I was younger and a much, much more hardcore uh, sports fan than I am now because I'm older and trying to not be as stupid as I used to be. Trying, not always accomplishing, but trying and also realize like this is my job now, so I can't really be a fan. But yeah. You want to you want to fly the flag. I want to walk around in my, you know, I, I don't like when the Red Sox let Mookie Betts go. I want to walk around in my my Red Sox jersey. I would be like, hey, hey, get Mookie Betts. Look at the money that they're spending. Look at how good this team is. You know, you you want to feel good about this is you you have that civic pride. The other reason, the more practical reason why we want to see these guys go out there and just lay waste to a team like the Spurs is. Jalen Brown played 39 minutes. Al Horford played 31 and a half minutes. Jason Tatum played 36 minutes. You shouldn't have to play 39 minutes from Jalen Brown and 36 from Tatum and 31 and a half from Al Horford to beat the Spurs. You shouldn't have to do that. You're shooting yourselves in the foot. So it's a good win in a lot of ways. It's a bad win in some ways because it took so much effort and energy and it's cumulative, man, that, that you're going to go into the, the home game against Chicago, and that's going to be a little bit more of a struggle because any little time you can get off your feet and not have to play NBA-level basketball is helpful. Marcus Smart, I mean, he would have been out there anyway, but he left the game in the third quarter. Maybe he wouldn't have been out there in that situation. Maybe he would have already been on the bench. Who knows? But he got he knocked knees or took a knee right above his left knee and, and, and came out and x-rays negative and, and that should be good. But those, those are, let me tell you something. If you've never taken a knee to the thigh like that, you don't know how painful that is, man. That is, that is, oh, especially right above the knee that really, that swelling can just seep down into the knee and that that's, he should be fine and it may not cause any structural damage, but hopefully that doesn't, doesn't become any worse that there's no inflammation. He, I would not be shocked if he missed the Chicago game. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even be shocked if he missed both games at home. Not that I expect that. I haven't heard anything, but there's, there's certainly a possibility there, but we, we should expect that when the Celtics go out there, and especially in the situation, fourth game on the road trip, it's been a long trip. These guys are are still tired. They're still human. You can give them all the money in the world. It doesn't make your body not get sore. So when they were up by 15 and they spent most of the first half getting to the rim 
ha- almost half their shots were at the rim. 44% of their shots were in the restricted area in the first half. That drifted below 40% in the second half. They stopped going to the rim. So they got up by 15, and they started to try to shoot their way into the, the knockout punches, the you know the threes, the, 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 the jump shots, the not getting to the rim quite as much. They'd get to the rim when they needed to, but that's, that's what we should start expecting. We should just expect that. They're not going to get up the way the way you want them to, and that's just going to be how it is. They're going to relax when they have a big lead, and they're going to try to hit shots and hit jumpers and, and do that. And th- this is this is just kind of what we should expect against these bad teams. They're going to play great against great teams. They played great against Milwaukee in Christmas. They played great against Dallas. They played really well. I thought they played a decent game against Denver. That was good effort, bad execution, as I've said a million times. They will have those games. But I I just feel like our expectation that they're going to walk in there and blow the doors off of these bad teams, especially in in some of these situations like either a trap game or last game on the road trip or something like that, we we just need to adjust our own expectations. Hey, they won. I'm talking about this game almost like they lost. They won. They won this game. And the quality of win, there's no line in the box score that says, was this a quality win? It's just a win. The Celtics have won 70% of their games. They're the only team in the league to win 70% of their games. They're 14-5 and five against teams below 500, by the way. They're 14-5. and five. They have a good record. They have one of the league's best records against teams below 500 because they have one of the league's best records anyway. I started the show like this because the expectations that we set, we set this expectation and I can tell, I know a lot of people are going to be like, Oh God. All right. We'll take the win. But man, I just didn't like that. Just didn't like the way, the way, the way that went. They got bailed out by Rob. They got bailed out by Malcolm Brogdon. I'll be talking about that in just a minute. First, let's talk about LinkedIn jobs, you know, small businesses, hiring managers, you know, that 2023, It's all about acquiring the best team members, just like building a a team, a basketball team. If you're starting from scratch, you got to try to get 30 plus players in there to work them all out and figure out, okay, who are we keeping and who are we not going to keep? This is basically what LinkedIn jobs does. It gets you the, uh, the qualified candidates for your opening jobs, your open jobs with targeting tools. So, You can do it quickly. You can go beyond the resume data by using insights from your job post, the company, uh, and their uh, $875 million member profile. $875 million, not million dollar. $875 million, as in people, member profiles, to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. So there's, there's the big chunk, and then there's your chunk. And then from there, you can identify the most qualified candidates on LinkedIn Jobs and connect with them for fast and for free. You can screen and rate the applicants based on your job qualifications, and it's all on one platform. Whittle it down and get the people that you know fit best. This is why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in developing or delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash lockdown MBA. That's LinkedIn.com slash lockdown MBA. To post your job for free, terms and conditions apply. I got through that ad read about as well as the Celtics got through the second half. But persevered, and I finished it, and I won. I came out on top. Celtics came out on top. Uh, Jason Tatum led the way, 34 points. Uh, 50% two, 50% from three. Three of five from the line. Jalen Brown, three of six from the line. So combined six of 11 from the line from Tatum and Brown, that was weird. Uh, Jalen Brown, 29 points, 12 of 26 shooting two of seven from three, also four rebounds, also two assists, two steals for him, two blocks, but six turnovers. Jalen weird turnovers, Tatum and Brown completely whiffed on passes to one another, one in the back court, one in the front court, just that alone tells you how weird this game was. They just were not on the same page there. Uh, Jalen's turnovers, he had four in the second half. Every single one of those felt like killers. 
live ball, just bad, bad, bad turnovers. And that's part of what kept the, the Spurs close. But every time the Celtics needed a bucket, Malcolm Brogdon. Every time he hit a three, and he was five of six from three. Every time he hit a three, he was like, I, I felt like, oh, they needed that one. <laughs> I said that basically to myself all five times. Uh, Brogdon in December shot 34.7% from three. In four games in January, he started off shooting 53% from three. And he shot over 50% in November. So it was it's like, talk about hot and cold. He's went hot, freezing cold, and now he's back to hot. Uh, I don't expect him to stay at 52%. <laughs> that's something that's going to change. I would like it if we get to the regression to the mean. I'd like to find the mean and just kind of stay there. Whatever the mean is for him this year, let's just kind of stay there. But in this game, Brogdon was huge. Uh, I do question why Brogdon wasn't in the game late, but they went with Derek White, who was also good. Derek White got a nice reception back in San Antonio for the first time since the trade. He played really, really well early early on. Three block shots for him. I thought he played great defense. He's just such a great defender. And he, you know, the blocks that he's getting on drives, it's just amazing. So uh, he was really good. But Robert Williams, Robert Williams is the difference maker in, in, in this one. Brogdon kind of was the, the he, he held off the Spurs with his shooting. And Rob came in and finished off the Spurs with his defense and his offensive rebounding and finishing the block shot on the three, getting it out into transition was awesome. That finish was, <laughs> if he had just taken one more dribble, I think the entire world wanted to see what kind of finish he would have pulled off. Kind of actually glad that he just laid it in. So he didn't try to show off too much. And I don't know with his knee, every, everybody's like worried about that, but, uh, Rob came in and just the, the, the block shots the, he scared. You could see how he scared the San Antonio Spurs into not even attacking him at the rim. Once he came out, you can see the Spurs attacking again and getting it close. So the, the, one of the big questions coming out of this, and we'll, you know, we'll start to talk about this a little bit more tomorrow. And, and as the, the week goes on, Rob plays 20, Two minutes in this game, 21.45. So basically 22 minutes. Al Horford plays 31 and a half. At what point can we see that flip around? At what point does Al Horford start to play 22, 25 minutes in that range and Rob start to get to the 30, 31, 32? That's, that's where I want to get to. And it's not that Al, I'm not saying start Rob for Al. I think this is a, if we go back and look at Al Horford's history, uh, this is about when he slows down. He he has like, Al is very good at, it's almost like he goes into a sort of basketball hibernation. He just, he, you know, you ever hear about how like a, a an animal goes into hibernation, their body starts to shut down a little bit and their, their, their body temperature starts to, you know, cool off. They get to a point where they can kind of survive in this kind of long sleep mode. Well, I mean, Al is still playing basketball. So he still has to, you know, uh, be active and all of that stuff. But he 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 shuts his body down to a point where he's playing like a, a little bit more reserved. He's not he's he rebounded well, 11, 11 rebounds in this one, but only four points. He took seven shots. He played a lot, around the rim a lot more than usual, but he's just kind of like. Dialing it down a little bit. Just dial it down a little bit. And then when March and April and May come around, he'll start to ramp it back up again. But that just means play him less. Play him. Let's just lean into that. Play him 25. Play him less than 30 minutes a game. Rob, I don't know what the minutes restriction is. He says he doesn't have a minutes restriction anymore. They're limiting him. They're very obviously keeping him around 22 minutes what's the what's what's the number going to be are they ready to push it up to 23 are they ready to push it up to 25 because he started out playing about 18 and now he's up to 22 can they go up three four minutes 
or do they just rearrange where the minutes are? Because very obviously, Rob is important, and Rob was an absolute game changer in this one, an absolute monster game changer in this game. They do not win this game without Brogdon and without Robert Williams. No chance at all. Brogdon, by the way, 23 points, seven assists. Uh, Derek White, I said, uh, I talked about Derek before, eight, eight points, 11 assists for him, which is his high as a Celtic. He had 10 once uh, earlier this season. So his two highs uh, in assists, the two times he's dropped double digits in assists have been this season. That's nice to see. Um, but more, more minutes for Rob. And then uh, I'll finish with this. Jason Tatum after the game was asked about Rob and he said, Hey, I want to play with Rob more. You know, he, he got subbed out in the fourth quarter. And I said, do you want your minutes restriction? He goes, nah, he goes, Oh, well, get your ass back in the game. You know? Uh, and Tatum says, I want to play with Rob as much as possible. So I'd like him to start. If Jason Tatum is saying, I'd like Robert Williams to start. I'm going to bet that Robert Williams is going to end up starting. At some point, Robert Williams will start because Jason Tatum wants him to. And it's not a matter of Jason Tatum calls the shots, but when your best player says, oh, I'd love, to st- I'd love this guy to start. I want to play with him as much as possible. As a coach, you probably say, hey, I mean, if it's going to make, if it's going to make your star player more comfortable, then maybe we should probably do it. So at some point, I think they're going to do it. We'll talk more about that as the week goes on. Again, Celtics on Monday play Chicago. It's a Monday, Wednesday home, two home games. It's Chicago. It's New Orleans. They got that Tuesday. I'm sorry, the Wednesday, Thursday back to back home against New Orleans. Then in Brooklyn, not the worst back to back in the world. It's a quick flight over to New York. So it's not so bad. Uh, and then they have Friday off, and then they play They play next Saturday. So similar schedule this week for the podcast. Back tomorrow with much more to talk about. We'll dive more into the Robert Williams stuff and his minutes and all of that. Uh, and then post games and, and all of that stuff throughout the week and a bonus podcast on Saturday. So subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you are uh, also subscribed on YouTube so you can watch the show, join in on the comments, celebrate with the uh, Celtics fans in there. Tell me, tell me what you think. Is my tone right? Was my tone right in this podcast? Was I too negative? Was I too kind of eh about this? Or was I right on the money? Or was I too positive? Let me know because um, I'd like to hear your opinion. And uh, if you are a subscriber, I'd love it if you shared the podcast. Spread the word. Tell your friends and family and everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Your team every day.